Hey everyone, in my last series I covered Vim from start to finish. And in this series I'm going to cover bash topics, but specifically the advanced parts. So in my day-to-day -day workflow, I use bash a little bit more extensively than most other developers I've seen. The developers I interact with tend to use the bare minimum amount of bash. So ls and cd and makedir and rm, and then they get the hell out of there as soon as possible. So the first one to start off with is the history command, which is pretty basic. Most people know the history command. You run it, and you get a numeric list of things that you've done, with the oldest at the top and the most recent at the bottom. So if I say, now we get two is the most recent. So the reason they're numbered is because we can use this number later to recall the command. The second thing is history-c, which clears your history. If I do ls, we'll see that I only have one entry in it. It's not terribly useful, but if you have a really long history and you just want to clear it all out and start fresh, that's the command you want to use. The next part of this is the most basic form of recall, and most developers know this, and it's bang bang, with the most common example being sudo bang bang. So let's just show what it does quickly. So if I say echo hello world, I'll get this. If I want to run the command again, I can say bang bang, it's going to run the command again. Now this is particularly useful if you have a really long command like echo really long command here, and you didn't run it with sudo, but you should have, so you can just say sudo bang bang. And then we'll run the command to sudo, et voila. So this doesn't exactly run the command. So if you notice here, this looks like it's running the command. But what it's actually saying is, hey, bash, when you see bang bang, replace it with this string, which is the previous command that I ran. So that's why we can do sudo space bang bang. Because what it does is, you'll notice here, this is the command it executes, because bash sees it, replaces that, and puts sudo on front. So that means you can put stuff in front of and behind it. It's not the bang bang itself that executes it, it's you hitting enter. So the next one is bang n. So this is when you use the number from the history command. So if I type history, we can see all the commands that I've run. And if I want to run the fourth one, I can just say bang 4. And that's it. It'll just execute the fourth item in the history command. This is possibly the most basic up from bang bang. So if I type history, you'll notice that it doesn't put bang4 in there. It puts the actual command in there. Because like I said before, it's not actually executing bang4. Bash sees that, replaces it with the string, which was the fourth command, and then executes it. So that's important to keep in mind. The third part of this is basic parameter recall. So we've learned recalling a command with bang bang and bang n. But what if you just want to recall the, the parameters from a specific command? In this case, the previous command, because that's the easiest. So if I execute echo foo bar baz, we'll see here that bang asterisk is all the, the parameters from the previous command, noting that the zeroth parameter in bash is the command itself. So it excludes that. So if I say cat bang asterisk, that's going to cat all of the arguments from the previous command. Obviously, I don't have files, foobar, and baz, but you'll see that it ran cat and then all the arguments from the previous command. This is particularly useful if you fat finger a command. So if I say echo foobar baz, it doesn't know what that means. I can say echo that. Instead of hitting up and then home and then deleting until I get rid of the command and then typing the real command. Really, really useful, especially if you have a command that has a ton of arguments, like curl or wget. It saves a ton of time. So the next one is like bang n, except this recalls the nth parameter instead of the nth command. So if I say echo 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then echo bang colon, and then the one indexed number of the previous command. Because remember, zero is the command itself in bash. So if I want to get the third parameter, I'd say three. And it just echoes three. 
Now, obviously, this works for non-numeric things. So I can say echo foo bar baz blah, and then echo bang colon three again. I'm going to get baz. So that's the simplest version of that, and that's I find this really useful in my workflow when I get remote add. So if I add a get remote, get remote add foo um, http colon slash slash foo, right? I would hit enter, and then to fetch that, I would just do get fetch colon, or bang colon three, rather. So, obviously, this won't work because foo is not a real place. But you can see how it fits into a common workflow. And once you get the hang of it, it's really, really useful. Both bang asterisk to fix a command, and bang colon n to get a parameter from a previous command. Now on to recalling commands in a more advanced way. So the first one we're going to go over is bang question mark and then a string. So what this does is it'll execute the previous command that had whatever you search for in it. Note that this is just a string. It's not a regular expression. You, can, you can't put a, a full-on PCRE regex in there and expect it to work. It's just a string. So let's do a demo of that. So if I say echo hello and echo world and echo goodbye, and then do a history. You'll see I have a bunch of commands in there. Let's say I want to run the last echo I did with Baz in it. So I could say bang question mark Baz, and it'll run echo Baz. Really useful if you have a ton of, for example, curl calls that you've been making, and you want to run one that you want to run the last curl you did that was a get. For example, you just do bang colon get, and you're done. Incredibly useful, and not. I don't think I've ever seen a developer use that besides myself outside of like really, really amazing sysadmins who I happen to work with. The next one is a bit simpler and it's just bang command. It'll just run the previous command that you give it. And it, it isn't as accurate as the search because you may have a ton of previous commands or the previous one you ran wasn't the one you want. But if I just want to run the last cat I did, as you can see, it's pretty far back in the history. You can just say bang cat and it'll run that. Quite useful on the opposite end of the spectrum where the search is useful if you have a lot of commands that you've run that are the same and you want to differentiate them, differentiate them between the search. Whereas if you've only run a command a few times and you want to recall the last time you did it, bang command is really useful for that. So from here on out, anytime you see history ref here in the docs, I'm referring to any of these things I did before. So uh, any of these command recalls that I've done before. So bang bang, bang n, uh, bang command, bang search. That's what I refer to as a history ref. So we're going to take a look at some advanced parameter recall. So what you can see here is any of these history refs, any of these bang, 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 n, bang command, or bang search, followed by a colon, and then one of these operators will recall the parameters from that command. So we saw before where you can recall the previous command's parameters, but now we, can, we see we can recall parameters from any command that we've run. And this is incredibly powerful. So I'll show you a really quick example. So if I take a look at my history here, Let's say I want to get the last parameter from the fifth command. So, for example, if I say echo bang five, five colon dollar sign, that's going to say take the last parameter from this history ref, which is bang five, and we get here because here is the last parameter from the fifth command. Now, this is also useful if you want to grab all the parameters. So, just like we had bang asterisk, we can have echo bang cat colon asterisk. So, get all of the parameters from the previous cat command and echo those. Again, really useful if you want to do something like, I don't know, echo bang curl colon this, which would echo out all the parameters from the previous curl command you did which might be useful if you're doing that. So you also have n, which we saw before with bang colon n, and we have dollar sign, which is the last command, we have asterisk, which is all of the commands, and then caret, which just like the 
dollar sign is an anchor except for the, the front instead of the first one, or instead of the last one rather. So instead of doing bang five colon dollar sign, we can say bang five colon caret, and we'll get the first argument, which is really. So echo bang five colon caret, and we get, oh, we get echo because it's pseudo, right? So the first argument to pseudo is echo. And that's that, that's quite advanced. That's for the most part, the most advanced I get with parameter recall in my day-to-day -day work is I'll be running a bunch of commands. Um, maybe I'm doing some curl stuff. You'll notice that's a recurring theme. And now I want to get the URL from the previous curl command I did, which is the last parameter. So I can say curl foo dash h foo bar bang curl like that. That way I don't have to retype the URL all over again and possibly mess it up. In this next one, we're going to go over a basic replace. So we've done recall up to this point, recalling a command or recalling a parameter. But what about fixing a command or just replacing something from a previous command and running it? So the most basic example is the replace equivalent of bang bang. So let's say I do like my mistake before, I do echo foo bar baz instead of echo. I could do echo that to get all the parameters from a previous command, which would entirely work. That'd be fine. I could also hit up and then home and delete, delete, delete. But the fast way to do that is up echo bang echo, which the first caret is the thing you're searching for. The second character caret is what you want to replace it with. So if I do that, we get the right command. Now this isn't terribly useful for fixing your command because we have because we have that, which is particularly easier to type. But if I'm doing I'm going to use curl again as an example. If I'm doing a long curl command and I have a bunch of headers and I say foo far and I have a ton of stuff here and maybe I got the command right maybe I didn't mess up the command but I just want to run it again on a different machine so let's take a, a, an advanced example of that so I have echo foo bar baz blah test testing tester hello world so let's imagine that's a really long command and I want to run that command again for example I want to curl another server. So I can replace hello with goodbye, and that will replace hello with goodbye in the string, and then run it again. Like I said, this is the replace equivalent of bang bang. The thing to keep in mind, and this is quite important, is that it is not a global replace. It'll only replace the first instance it finds. So if I say bang test, colon foo, only the first test is going to re be replaced, not test testing tester. So, like we see there, we didn't get fooing fooer, we only got foo. So that's important to keep in mind. There is a way to do a global replace, but it's a different command entirely. This is just to really quickly replace the previous command. So that was a basic replace with just the previous command, but we can also do that with any history ref. So just like we could do a history ref colon one of these operators to recall one, there's also the s operator to substitute a, something with something else. That's what s is in most every place you see it in vim and ed, everything else. So if I want to, let's say I want to run the last cat command, replacing the bar with hello. I can say bang cat colon s bar hello. So this is kind of an advanced command structure. So let's go over it part by part and break it down and go over it again. So we have bang cat, which recalls the previous cat command, and then bang s, which says replace. And then the first slash is what you want to search for. The second slash is what you want to replace it with. So we run that. We see the last cat command is 
Foo Bar Baz. We ran Foo Hello Baz because, like I said, we replaced Bar with Hello. Now, the colon S is not a global replace. It is a singular replace. Just like carrot carrot was a singular replace, colon S is a singular replace, but against a history ref and not against the previous command. So to do a global replace, all you have to do is bang cat GS. You just put a G in front of the S and now you've got a global replace. So if, for example, this 26th command here, I want to replace all of the tests with foo. So if I say bang 26 colon GS test foo, now we get foo fooing fooer instead of foo testing tester. Really handy. Again, these are the more advanced side of what I use in my day to day. But when you come across a really com long command that you're running, and let's say you come back to work three days later, and you're like, oh, man, that curl command, I really don't want to mess around with finding it again. So you do a history grep bar. You'd see bang 23. Okay, this one is going to goodbye, bang 26, goodbye, bye, hello, and you're all set. Really, really handy. Um, especially, like I said, with long commands, curl, w, get, things like that. The next thing we're going to go over is modifiers. So, there's really no real name for these. I just call them modifiers, you can call them filters, whatever you want. So these can be performed on any substitution, a substitution being any of the ways to recall something from above. So one of, it's either a history ref like we have here, or it's a parameter recall ref like we have up here. And you can perform that on those. So for example, the first one we're going to go over is a substitution colon T. And that gets the tail of a string. The tail is the file name in a path. And I'll show you that really quickly. So if I say echo... Hello, world, foo, bar, baz. And I look at my history and I say ls and ll, and that's not a thing, evidently. And echo, blah. And let's say I'm, I want to edit the command I, I made, or edit the file I made in 32. Let's, let's imagine the echo was a touch. So if I say, Let's just use echo again. Echo bang 32 colon. So we know this part. This is get the last argument from the 32nd command. But I only want the file name. So I could echo this and hit enter and then hit up and delete it all. But I could just do this. So this says take this substitution and apply this modifier to it or filter, whatever you want to call it. And we get baz really really useful this is especially useful in things like git clone and make dir stuff like that if i were to do a git clone git clone slash slash foo foobar.com slash hello let's imagine i'm grabbing the hello repo and i hit enter there so i'm going to have the last command as actually we'll just we'll just run this won't do anything hopefully it won't do anything i hope uh foobar.com probably exists so we'll just we'll just cancel that let's take a look at our history so it's in our history let's make sure it's not actually there okay we didn't actually get a foo repo so imagine i just did a git clone it was my previous command i can say cd that so this is get the last argument from the previous command and then the tail of it. Because you can't cd to git colon slash slash foobar hello, but you can cd to hello because git clones into that directory. And that's really, really useful. It just saves time when you're cloning repos. Git clone blah 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 slash blah cd bang colon col bang dollar sign colon t and you just cd into that directory. Really simple. Now, you can use this on any history ref, not just the previous command. So, like we did before with bang32, let's just do that again, echo bang32, colon t. 
We can also get any part of that command. It doesn't have to be the end. We can say bang cat colon t. This won't do much because there's no path. So there's no path, so it doesn't really do much for us. But if there's a path involved, that's what you want to use t for. So h is like t, except it's a head, which is the path minus the file. So if I were to get bang32 colon echo bang32 colon h, we see we get the path minus the file instead of the file alone. Again, kind of useful if you're doing something like, let's say you copy long file path here to a thing to another path over here to uh, another blah. So you'd run this command. Let's, it won't do anything here. It's going to fail. So let's say I want to cd into this directory, right? And then edit this file. Okay? So actually, let's use a better example. Let's say I don't change the file name. I just do this. So I just want to cd into that directory. I can say cd bang cp colon. So I can cd into that directory. And again, that won't go anywhere. And then I can vim bang cp colon one colon t, which will get the tail of the first argument to cp, which is thing. Simple as that. So if that makes sense, let's go on to the next thing, which is Q. So this is possibly the least used thing. Q and X are the least used thing out of everything in this entire file. They have an incredibly niche usage, but I guess if you happen to run into it, remember that it exists. So it surrounds the substitution that you give it with single quotes. So for example, if I history and look at cat, I have cat foo hello baz. So if I say echo bang cat colon q, what this is going to do is get the let's get the arguments from colon from that. So let's get all the arguments from the last cat, and then surround those with quotes. So that's what you get right there. Now, like I said, this is really niche usage and. I think I've maybe used it five times ever, uh, but it exists if you need it. So X is like Q, except that it will split on spaces and then put quotes around those. So if I say echo bang cat colon asterisk colon X, I get split on the spaces and then put quotes around them. Even more niche usage there, but it exists if you need it. The one I didn't list in this file, but I find particularly useful a lot is colon p. So if I say bang cat colon p, this is going to print the last cat command I did, put it at the bottom of my history so I can edit it if need be. So if I say bang cat colon p, it's going to print that command. It's not going to run it. It's the only one of these that won't run the command when you hit enter just going to print the command and then put it at the top of my history. Now this is really useful if you just want to see the previous command you ran without running it. Um, so I, I use this quite often. This is probably the, the most used operator or modifier or filter or whatever you want to call it in my workflow is, is colon p. So you just have an example here. If I have cat foo bar cuz I can say bang cat asterisk colon x and it replaces all of those there. That's that simple. The last part we're going to go over here are settings. So there aren't a ton of settings that deal with your history, but they are important and they're useful. So all of these like any other bash setting you set with export the setting name equals value in your bash RC. So the first one I'm going to go over is hist size. I don't use this personally because the default is, is plenty fine. 
um, it just sets how many entries it'll put in your history. The bash docs say it defaults to 500. Uh, your system might have a different default. I think the one I run on at work has a thousand, something along those lines. You can set it to whatever you want. 500 is probably plenty. So the next one is hiss control. And this is the only one that I personally have in my bash RC. So what this does is based on this setting, it changes the behavior of what happens when you hit enter. So the first one is ignore dupes. So if you set hiss control equal to ignore dupes and then run the same command twice, you won't get two entries in the history. You'll only get the one time you ran it. This, this is pretty useful. So you don't have 8,000 LSs in a row if you're, if you're kind of compulsive like me and you need to know what's in the directory at all times. The next one is ignore space. And what this does is if you put a space before the command you run, this will not put it in the history. Um, this is really useful, like I, I mentioned in the, the notes, if you're running a curl command that has an inline password or any command that has some sensitive stuff you don't want to put in your bash history file. It will just ignore that out. And finally, ignore both is if you want to have both of these behaviors at the same time. So let's take a look at my bash RC and we can see that here. So the fourth setting, which I don't list in here, I'll have to update the, the docs, uh, su sue me, is hist ignore. So this is just a comma delimited list of commands to not put in your history. So for example, the reason that when I type history, history doesn't show up in there is because of this setting. Likewise, if I type clear, clear doesn't show up in there either, but ls does. Because I find it really, really annoying to type history and then only to have my previous command be history. So if I were to say want to set ignore space, I would say export hist control equals ignore space. That simple. This is pretty much it. I've covered from the point of where I consider advanced history recall, which is bang n, all the way into substitution colon p, which is quite quite advanced. I would say that you might need colon x or colon q at some point in your usage of the shell, but at the very least, if you take any, I'd say handful of these away, you absolutely need to know bang bang. You absolutely need to know bang n. You absolutely need to know bang asterisk and bang colon n. This is terribly, terribly useful. So is bang command. So I'd say from here up, really, so one through seven, you need to know. If, if you're a developer and you're working on the shell, you need to know these. You're wasting so much time. It, I cringe every time I'm looking over someone's shoulder and they're hitting up, 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 backspace, 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 holding backspace down, and then retyping an entire half of a command because they mistyped a URL. That is really frustrating when it's really simple to get these this set down and then once you get used to those you can toss this set in as well and even and increase your speed even more than that it's it's awesome to watch someone use the shell when they know commands like these because they you really look like you know what you're doing and it is a real great feeling when you can just tell the shell to do exactly what you want and it does what you want it, it's a great feeling. So that's all I use in my common workflow. If you have any questions about this, put it in the comments. I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. If you have a different workflow, if you're using ZSH, for example, I would love to know what the equivalents are. So do a video on this stuff for ZSH because I want to make the switch to ZSH and that would be helpful to me. Thank you very much. 
wait for the next video. See you later.